Today I'll be looking at KL Banker and how we can take the encrypted strings from the binary and then decrypt them and put them into a project to make our reversing a lot easier. KL Banker is a banking trojan thought to be from Brazil and is used to steal and collect information on a victim. This malware is written in csharp.net. So we'll use dnspy first to take a look around the project. The malware comes in the form of a binary that is a DLL. The exports of this DLL are seen here, such as A and B. These can be run by a loader to determine which functionality should be run first. Looking through the binary in the program class, we run across our first problem, which is this AES decrypt and then followed by a string and a password. Looking at the string, we can see that it looks as if it's a base64 string and this reference to a password is somewhere else in the binary. Going on the decrypt function, we can read through it and understand more of how this malware will decrypt its strings. Looking through, a number is defined and then the malware will use UTF-8 get bytes of the key, which is the password we saw earlier, and compute an MD5 hash of this. This will then be put into the key buffer. After this, it'll populate the IV of the decryption function with an array, which is populated with 16 zero bytes. Once the IV and the key have been populated, the malware will then read in the input and use base64 string decoding on that input, which will then be put into a buffer and used within the decryption. After all this is done, a new byte stream will be created and the decrypted text will be populated in this byte stream, which is then turned into UTF-8 string and returned. Going back, we can find the password to this AES decryption function by following this reference here. And we can see that the password is 1234. We also see another call for a string called mutex and it's again decrypting another string. So if I were to go through this binary and start analyzing it, I could of course manually replace each one of these strings and decrypt them as we go along, but this is very time consuming. In tools such as IDA, you can automate this with comments and IDA Python, but for DNSpy, it's not as easy. So what I'm going to show today is a Python script that we can create, which will annotate this project so that we can look at it and not have to deal with all of these decryption functions and simply have them replaced with the final string. To begin, let's go ahead and select the project here. This is the binary within DNSpy. Ignore all of these other imports. We're simply concentrating on this. So I've clicked on it and we can start by exporting to a Visual Studio project. I've exported the project and we can see it here. Yes, this is a Visual Studio project, but I'm not going to be using Visual Studio for basic code analysis because I see it as quite a bulky program and I'd rather opt for more for more lightweight programs such as Sublime Text. In the export, we see exactly the same kind of output that we saw within DNSpy, but now all of the files have been exported into individual .c -sharp files, which allows for us to go ahead and start replacing each of these AES decrypt calls with the decrypted string. To do this, I'm going to write a program in Python that should be a one-click solution for these kinds of projects. So I've created a skeleton of a file here, which simply just has a function of main. It'll take an argument of the path to the folder we're looking for, and then go through each of the files recursively through this folder to find ones that end with .cs, which is the C sharp ending of code files. So if I call this script, we can see all of the paths to the C sharp files. We can now send this to another function that'll find each of the AES decrypt within these files. So I've gone ahead and added a bit more code to our script. What it's doing here is, as I mentioned before, finding every file that ends with CS and then sending it to a function which I've named handle file. Handle file will take the file and read through it. It'll go through line by line of the file and then search using regex for the AES decrypt. So this is quite a simple regex. All it's doing is simply going and looking at each line, looking for AES decrypt, 
and then I've defined a matching group here in between the quotes within the function call. So it will get any string that is between these two double quotes. What's good here is that we can match the full function call for replacement later, but we also have a group defined within the string. So I can extract out the string that's being decrypted. Once it has found a match using this regex, we can print out the string that's being decrypted and then call our AES decrypt function. I copied and pasted an AES decrypt function off of Stack Overflow and modified it a little bit to suit our needs. In the Stack Overflow answer that I had previously found, the user was using SHA-256 to encode their key. But as we saw in the malware, it's using MD5 instead. So I've changed that call from SHA-256 to MD5. Besides that, there weren't any other massive changes that I needed to do to my script and it worked straight off the bat, which is very good. Regularly have issues with implementing some of the encryption that malware uses. So I'm very happy that this was quite easy. So after we've extracted the string from the function call, we can then send it to this AES decrypt function. If I run the script, we can see the output of this script. We can see here the initial encrypted bytes and its decrypted string. Going through it, we can see lots and lots of different strings that can all be very interesting for analysis. There's quite a lot of calls to this function, but earlier I saw mentions of banks such as Santander and so on. Now that we can successfully decrypt strings, let's replace all of the calls to this function with the decrypted string so that it can become much easier for analysis. So I've gone ahead and finished up the script now. I've changed the handling of the results that I've found. And what we do is we populate the results list with first the complete match of the call to AES decrypt along with the decrypted string that is from the regex match. After this results list has been populated, we then reopen the file that we're replacing in and read all of the contents. This, instead of going line by line, will give me a string with which has the complete file content. And then using this, we can go through each of the replacements and for each result that we have the regex match and the decrypted string, we can then replace the call to AES decrypt with our decrypted string. I've enclosed the decrypted string in quotation marks so that if you were to open this up in something like Visual Studio, the output won't be messed with because some IDEs will see a string that isn't enclosed with quotation marks and start having issues with it. After this is done and all of the replacements are completed, we can then write our replaced file data into the original file. And I've added a print statement here just to show the amount of replacements we've done in the file. So this is one of the files that we'll be replacing. Going through it, we can see a lot of calls to AES decrypt and what we hope to see is that this call here gets returned with the correct string. I can go into my command prompt and call the string and we can see the output here. It hasn't replaced anything within some of these serializers, but if I scroll up to the files that do contain the calls to this function, we can see that it has replaced 13 calls in one of the files and a massive 76 calls in the Monte Carlo file. Also, this is the file that we looked at a second ago, and you can see that it's replaced 13 calls in it. If I go back, you can see that the file up has updated and we have the correct strings populated within our source, making analysis of this malware lots easier. I hope that this was a useful tutorial on how I handle some decryption of strings within files and how I make my life a lot easier by creating these scripts. This can be done a lot hackier, but for this video, I wanted to illustrate how you would do this if you were going to analyze the same family over many different binaries and instances of it.
Some of you may realize that this technique can be used for config extractors, and it would be easy for me to go through all of the decrypted strings and regex for things such as URLs. And if I knew their placement, and if I knew config strings within the file, I could then select certain strings that have been decrypted and can use that as a config extractor. I hope this was an informative and useful video for all of you. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Until the next one, goodbye.